Hello and welcome to the Neuro Spicy Travel Podcast. Join me on my adventures abroad where I embrace solo travel head on. As a person with autism, I'd love to share my personal stories, insights and practical tips for other fellow travellers on the spectrum. For this episode, it'll be me, Katie Parkin, talking about my experiences with autism and why I decided to start solo travelling back in 2018. So I was finally diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder about two months ago at the age of 28. I thought I'd give it a try after my little sister got her diagnosis and I seemed to tick all the boxes on the ASD questionnaire. I've always felt different. At school I only really had one friend and others never seemed to stick around. I used to enjoy my own space through reading and drawing and started playing games when I was a teenager where I could turn off all the lights and have my own space. I have a really big family who all used to live together. I used to wonder where people got their friends from and made it seem so easy. So with my application to my GP, I was asked to fill in the autism questionnaire again and hand it back to them. They told me about the Right to Choose campaign, which allows people to decide which organisation they want to go with for their assessment. Some of those were private and partnered with NHS, so they could still provide a free service. In the end, I went with Dr. J. colleagues, who were crazy fast at replying to me. My first call with them took about a month, with a friendly lady asking for an hour appointment to go through some tests. One test included reading a book that had no words, and making up stories using some items on my desk. I never thought they might be analysing my behaviour around the tasks, but they definitely got some interesting things down in my final report. So I was sent another questionnaire about two days later where I would have to go through it with a carer or a close friend to get a second point of view. This form took me about two hours to fill out with my mum on loudspeaker trying to help me with some of her thoughts. It was a bit emotional in the end. I was pretty overwhelmed with what she was saying. I had no idea I could sound nasty without my intention for example. I definitely need to work on that. A month later I was invited to another call with a psychiatrist who was also really friendly. He took about 40 minutes and talked about my childhood and what my relationships were like with family, friends and partner. He was excited to see my cat on the camera so that made things less stressful. At the end of the call he calmed down quite a lot and explained that the obvious was that I was autistic and that I should wait his report to come through the post just with some resources that I could look at and try and learn what it was all about. I realised that I'd been diagnosed within three months. It was actually a really pleasant experience. The report in the end talked about my eye contact being non-existent on the call and that it was hard to get a natural flowing conversation out of me. It hit like a ton of bricks, but some things did start to make sense afterwards. So I always worked in places where the noise and the environment became too much, so I'd leave shortly after. A kitchen assistant, working in marketing, customer services, IT... I'd never felt comfortable enough to be myself or thrive. I always did what I could and I paid for it in silence or maybe a breakdown when I got home. But that's what all adults do. Why did I find it so hard? From my first job to now, I've still no idea what would suit me best. Some things I struggle with include things like eye contact, knowing how to make a conversation flow and dealing with loud noises. I usually just end up crying in public if there's music in the street or maybe an ambulance. There are some things that I know I do well though because of my autism, a bit like a superpower. So I think that I'm good at organising myself and my money, even if I can be obsessive with it. I'm good at times just keeping and fixing things, uh, but out of all that, all that just normal practical stuff, I think I'm good at remembering things that I know nobody else noticed. I once remembered a blue ball as I walked into an old pub and a few hours later, Someone mentioned losing it. I was able to describe exactly where it was, as it had been stuck in my mind the entire time. So learning more about myself over the years, I decided that after enjoying my own company and being particular about things, gave me a great first step into travelling alone, where I could do exactly as I wanted, even if that meant staying in my hotel room all day. My first trip was to Scarborough in November 2019, after a bad breakup. 
I needed the simplest way to escape my house without getting lost. I took a direct train from Huddersfield, where I lived at the time, and booked a hotel through Booking.com. It was called Bay House, for £54 for two nights. Not a bad price after seeing them on Four in a Bed TV show. I gave myself no expectations to walk or do anything at all. My target was to get out of the house, get to Scarborough and be calm. I don't remember the train ride too well, which I think is a good sign that nothing crazy happened. It did take a while to find my hotel though, but got there in the end using Google Maps. It was on the south side of the beach where all the bigger hotels are that look identical. I remember standing and knocking at the hotel door for about 10 minutes, frozen in the wind. Nervous, tired and starting to regret my decision, a French lady came and I got checked in. I remember it smelling a little old, with the outdated carpets and bookshelves on the endless stairs. I was so excited to get to my room and drop off my things, so I could watch the view of the sea while it was dark. I struggled a lot in the evening, just to find somewhere to eat, and just went to the first place I found at the end of the street. A beautiful Italian restaurant, cosy and quiet enough for me to try and eat alone. Pizza would have been perfect. I walked into the staff sort of laughing with each other, and I nervously walked in, asking for a table for one. The waiter was happy to sort me in a little table, and I started to get comfortable, until he pulled away all the extra cutlery, just to confirm I was sitting alone. I was so awkward, not knowing where to look or what to do with my hands. Once again, I used my phone as a rescue for distraction, until my huge pizza arrived. It was amazing. I ended up boxing it up and eating it in my hotel room for the evening, watching game shows before bed. Not a bad start to the day. The next morning was spent frozen cold and very quiet. I trekked myself to a McDonald's breakfast because it was stress-free. I walked down to the coast with my coffee and took a seat to watch the waves in silence. I could have gone back to sleep there. A small old lady came to join me and started asking questions about what I was doing, sort of going alone. She explained why she came to Scarborough each year and that since her husband passed, she comes alone instead. I told her my whole life story in the end, and she gave some great advice about how to deal with the breakup. Hours passed, and I walked away trouble-free and proud that I'd spoken to somebody for so long. The rest of the trip was spent wandering along the pier. I walked to the other side of the beach and popped into the little charity shops for some treasures. I returned home, empowered to go again, and just like the little lady I met, I've been every single year since. A quick disclaimer with ASD. Is how I feel and what I see. I have no facts, no wish to teach. I want to share confidence to head for the beach. Ask your questions and give advice. Write your comments, but keep it nice. Another tale of travel at sea. In one month's time, who knows where I'll be. A quiet space, sun, a sea that's glistening. Thanks for finding me and thanks for listening.